Hey, what's up guys, it's Roy here. So today let's talk about the M2 Pro and the M2 Max MacBook Pros. So I did a video just a few days ago about the Mac Minis. So if you're interested in watching that, I will put a link down in the description. So I thought with this video, we would do a very similar video like I did with my Mac Minis, where it comes down to pricing, the build out, kind of like how much it might cost if you wanna spec it out in different ways, and maybe throw in some little bit of recommendation on my end. And then we'll talk about maybe who those particular build outs are gonna be for, depending on your content creation. And then we'll end with, if you already own the previous M1 Pro or M1 Max, is it worth upgrading to these new M2s? So let's jump right into pricing. So I'll break it down with the M2 Pro 14 inch versus the M2 Pro 16 inch. And then I'll do the same for the M2 Max versions. So $19.99 is the starting point for the M2 Pro 14 inch. And then for the M2 Pro 16 inch, you're looking at a $24.99 price. So a $500 difference there. Now, when it comes down to the differences, it really is internally mostly. So for the base model 14 inch, we're getting a 10 core CPU and a 16 core GPU. With the 16 inch, we're getting a 12 core CPU and a 19 core GPU. Now with the 14 inch and the 16 inch, it's technically spec bumps versus the previous model. But what I like about the 14 inch is that's actually what the upgrade was on the previous 14 M1 Pro. So getting that 10 core CPU and 16 core GPU is actually pretty nice considering that's considered the base for the M2 Pro. Now, both of them are getting 16 gigs of unified memory and 512 gigs of starting storage. Now, when it comes to some of the other differences, it mainly just boils down to like why the 16 inch is more expensive. And it's because it's a bigger MacBook, right? It's got a 16 inch screen. It's got a bigger just overall presence, right? It's, it's almost a pound heavier, essentially. Uh, you're getting a bigger battery, so better battery life, a bigger trackpad, bigger, bigger and better sounding speakers, which not a knock on the speakers of the 14 inch because they sound phenomenal, but the 16 inch just sounds a little bit better. And then other than that, it's all the same ports, right? So you're getting three Thunderbolt 4 ports, you're getting a SD card reader, you're getting a headphone jack, and you're also getting the new upgraded HDMI 2.1 port, which allows you to do up to an 8K resolution monitor or a 4K up to 240 Hertz monitor, which you weren't able to do with the previous model. So if you have a high refresh rate monitor, then you can definitely take advantage of that with this newer version. You're also getting on both uh, the newer updated 5.3 Bluetooth and also uh, the new Wi-Fi 6E. The Bluetooth is just more stable, so that's good. The Wi-Fi 6E, yes, you're getting faster speeds, but you have to have a wireless router that is 6E compatible, which then if you don't, you're spending more money. They're a lot more expensive than just the normal routers out there. So it's up to you if it's worth that upgrade, if you're solely going after the better Wi-Fi, which maybe that's okay since there's no ethernet port. And then if you want a port, then you gotta get a dongle. So the whole point is, is it's up to you if you feel like upgrading to this makes sense just for 6E. I personally don't think so, but that's up to you. Um, now let's talk about kind of the different builds that you can do with the M2 Pro. So the 16 inch, with the cores, you're pretty much maxed out. You can't upgrade that to something higher unless you just jump to the M2 Max. Now with the 14 inch, you can spend an extra $300 and get the same 12 core CPU and uh, 19 core GPU. For that extra 300 bucks, is it worth it? I don't know. Now with the memory, you're maxed out at 32 gigs for an upgrade. So you can spend an extra $400 on either one and get those 32 gigs. Now that, in my opinion, might be the better spend versus upgrading your 14 inch to get those extra cores. I think you'll maybe be better served with the more memory, uh, but that's up to you. Let me know down in the comments what you think about that. But if you know you need that much memory, then great. If you're questioning it, then you probably don't. And then the obvious other things are the upgrade uh, to your storage. So you can spend an extra $200 and get one terabyte. 
So doubling it for $200 might be worth it if you're going to intend on using this for a long time. If you're not, then maybe stick with the 512 and spend your money on an external SSD possibly. I don't recommend if you are gonna upgrade your storage, don't go past maybe two terabytes because then it just starts to get pretty dang expensive. And for the people that are even considering getting eight terabytes for another $2,400, I think that's just nutty. And other than that, that's pretty much it when it comes to the M2 Pro. I did forget to mention that you are getting color matching uh, mag safe cables now. So if you get the um, space gray or the silver, then your cable will match. Technically, you're getting a better charging brick with the 16 inch. You're getting the 140 watt charging brick versus the 67 watt charging brick that you're getting on the base 14 inch you can upgrade for another 20 bucks and get a 97 watt uh, charging brick for the 14 inch. And then just a side note, if you like fast charging with the 14 inch, you can actually fast charge through the USB-C charging ports, but on the 16 inch, you can't for some reason, you're only able to fast charge with the MagSafe charger. Now you can still charge your MacBook Pro with the USB-C charging cable, but it's not gonna fast charge. Now getting into the M2 Max, this is where I get a little more excited about because I personally own an M1 Max. I showed it off in my video of the Mac Minis and I love my M1 Max. It has truly been an amazing machine for my channel, even though I don't have a very big YouTube channel. But the point is, is I pretty much only record in 4K. I do rendering all of that in full resolution through Final Cut Pro and I've never had the beach ball uh, effect. I've never had an issue and the export speeds are chef's kiss when it comes to it. But with the M2 Max, somehow they made it even better with marginal bumps and performance. Uh, I know they're saying you're gonna be gaining maybe around 30% better performance uh, with the GPU performance and then about maybe 20% in the CPU performance. So with the base specs, let's jump into that. So the 14 inch, you're looking at 3,099 bucks for the 14 inch. And then for the 16 inch, you're looking at $3,499. Now on the base 14 inch, we're getting a 12 core CPU, a 30 core GPU, a base of 32 gigs of unified memory, and a base of one terabyte of storage. Now on the 16 inch, we're getting the same 12 core CPU, but you're getting a bump to the 38 core GPU, and then everything else is the same. Same 32 gigs of unified memory, same one terabyte of starting point for the storage. Now on the 14 inch, just to point out very quickly, you are getting the better charging brick for the 14 inch at the 96 watts versus the 16 inch that still comes with the 140 watt charger. So when we're building these out, the only upgrade that you can do on the cores for the M2 Max 14 inch is jumping up to that 38 core GPU. It's an extra $200, so it might be worth it, depending once again on you and what you're using it for. But I feel like if you're gonna keep this for a long time, an extra 200 bucks to get extra eight cores out of it for your GPU and get that little bit better bump in performance might be worth it but once again, it might not. So if you know you need it, great. If you know you don't, don't upgrade to it probably. And then on the 16 inch, once again, it's kind of like the M2 Pro version where you're pretty much at the max ceiling when it comes to the core. So you can't upgrade to something like a 42 core GPU or something like that. You're capped out at 38 cores. So congratulations, you're at least at that point and now you can maybe spend your money elsewhere with some minor upgrades. So when it comes to upgrading the memory on both of these, this is where it gets a little tricky. So on the 14 inch, you can upgrade to 64 gigs of unified memory for an extra $400. But if you upgrade to the 38 core uh, GPU version, now you're unlocking the ability to upgrade to the uh, 96 gigabytes for an extra $800. Now 
Now that's just insane that they are able to get 96 gigs of unified memory inside of these. And once again, most people aren't gonna need that. If you know you need it, you know you need it. If you don't, 32 gigs is probably plenty. Um, but maybe upgrade to 64 gigs if you're doing like some 4K, but maybe dabbling in 8K and maybe slowly transitioning to only 8K. I know the 32 gig version can chew up 8K like it's nothing, but let's just say you want to future proof it and you know you're keeping this for a long time, it might be worth jumping up and spending at least the $400 for the 64 gigs. Now on the 16 inch, you're able to upgrade to any of it. So if you want to go to the 96 uh, gigs of unified memory, you can because you already have the 38 core GPU. So there is no need to dabble in, okay, do I need to upgrade the cores because you already have that. It just really boils down to, do you want to spend four or $800 to get the 64 gigs or the 96 or just keep it at 32. And then both of them, once again, same storage options, right? They all come with one terabyte starting off. If you want to spend an extra $400 to upgrade to two terabytes, you can. That's where I would stop, like I said, about the M2 Pro. Um, you can get for another thousand whopping bucks, four terabytes. I just think that's overkill. I think you should save the money maybe buy another external drive or something, but don't spend another thousand bucks to just get four terabytes. All right, so now with all that being said, who are these four? I kind of subtly been saying it throughout the video, who I think the right content creator is for these particular machines. So what I'll say is this, if you are someone that's a pro, have a studio, a YouTube channel, and you're just doing a ton of video editing, ton of Photoshop, ton of Lightroom, ton of 3D rendering and builds and just whatever, then maybe spending the extra money on the M2 Max is worth it. But the M2 Pro can definitely handle a lot. I personally, like I said, with the M1 Pro and M1 Max, I've owned both, but my biggest difference is the export times for me. Cutting it in half virtually is a huge winner for me. Editing my videos, not having to worry about anything ever stuttering or slowing down, even though I'm only shooting in 4K, but the point is getting that time back to spend with my family. So like I said, depending on what your workload is, getting the M2 Max might be worth it. You know what you need, but I feel like, like I said, if you're starting to build out the M2 Pro and you're starting to creep into the price realm of the M2 Max, once again, Apple's really good at this, dangling that carrot saying, hey, for an extra few extra bucks, now you can get a much, much faster computer, blah, 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 blah. So it's, it's very enticing. Apple knows what they're doing, but the point is, is you have the power to make that decision, so what will it be? Now, at the end of this video, I promise I would tell you, should you upgrade from your M1 Pro or your M1 Max? And the simple answer is absolutely not. There's not enough upgrades, in my opinion, to justify the spend. Now, granted, if you have someone that's gonna buy your uh, M1 Pro or M1 max and give you a hell of a deal when it comes to buying it from you and then you spend that money towards the new version and you're only out of pocket a little bit then sure but i think the m2 pro and the m2 max for this year are really meant for the people that were thinking about buying the m1 max that i have staring at me or the m1 pro that i've owned and waited until this came out and then pull the trigger so if you are that person, then sure, jump on this one because you are getting a better computer technically. You're getting a faster GPU, faster CPU. So those single and multi-score, they're gonna be higher for sure. So if you care only about those types of things and stressful situations when they're putting all that stress on it, then go for it. But I think, and I'm just Mr. Bargain over here, I think the play and correct me if I'm wrong down in the, the comments, I think the play is to buy the M1 Max and M1 Pro still. And the reason why is because one, you can still get them new 
Um, and some places are going to start discounting them, like Micro Center. I know Best Buy will at some point. Um, it, it's just the nature of, of the game, right? But the refurbished market is going to be insane. Like I said in my Mac Mini video, so this is the M1 Max 14 inch, right? Pretty much what you would call the base model version. This one I got for around 1700 bucks on Facebook. That's a steal. So the point is, is they're out there. You just got to look. So if you're on Facebook, eBay, Mercari, Five Mile, whatever's in your area, it's worth looking at, guys, because I can tell you right now, you can get an M1 Pro easily for like 1200 bucks at most, most places um, when it comes to the used market. Hell, even on Apple's website for a refurbished certified M1 Mac base is like $2399. So to get that for seven, eight hundred dollars less than what the M2 Max is, might be worth it. But you let me know down in the comments. What do you think? If you already have the M1 Pro or the M1 Max, are you going to upgrade to this? Are you keeping it, or are you going to hold out for that bad boy M3 Pro or M3 Max, which supposedly then will have the three nanometer technology and just all around possibly just way better and who knows they might have a little bit different look as well let me know down in the comments if i missed anything please be sure to not shy away from that and uh, i really try to answer every question i am not an expert in any of this but i am just obsessed with it so hit that like button if you liked the video if you loved it please subscribe ring that notification bell for up-to-date content so be safe god bless and we'll see you on the next one